I had a surprising little find this week. I was actively looking for an e-ink reader tablet so I could read some technical books while on my boat. And it's hard with a normal tablet because it's bright sunshine. And the other thing is that I'm always hesitant to get new hardware if it's going to be risky for my privacy. I don't want another spy device around me. So check this out guys. This is an Onyx Books Nova 2 and it's a 2020 Android. And it's pretty interesting what I got it to do. Since this is an Android, can it be run de-Googled? So we're gonna go through an exercise to see if we can run this device without any Google. Stay tuned. This folks looks like an e-reader. Your first thought would be that this looks like a Kindle, but it's not. It's a lot more powerful and flexible than a Kindle and actually pretty useful for a lot of work, especially outdoors. But before we start, let me just remind you all again that I'm on the library platform, LBRY. I'm in the top 40s of all creators on there after just three months with over 12,000 followers. Very cool. I post there ahead of YouTube, so please follow me there. The link is at the bottom of the video description. It's a non-centering site, so I like that since my videos can be controversial. I also want to welcome my new sponsor, Linode. Get a $60 60-day credit if you set up a Linode server using the link in the description. Back to topic. This is the box for an Onyx Books Nova 2. This is not sponsored by the way. I just found this as I was looking for an e-ink reader and I came across this and bought it immediately. First, let's do a semi-unboxing here so you can see what it comes with. And just from the front pick here, you will think you are getting a Kindle. That's because it comes with an e-ink display. Now, the cool thing about an e-ink display is that it does not need backlighting in bright light. The bad thing about an e-ink display is that it is black and white and an e-ink display for those who have used a Kindle has a very slow refresh rate. So you'd think the applications would be limited. It's larger than a typical six inch Kindle, which is what I wanted because I wanted to read some technical textbooks and I needed more space. This size would also be good for reading music. Inside here, it comes with a pen, which is surprisingly useful as you will find out later. And there's no charger, just a charger cable, which is USB-C. So I'm sure that keeps the cost down. I believe I paid $340 for this on Amazon. I'll have a link for it in the description if you're interested. Now, whether or not you'd be interested in an e-ink platform, think of this as a de-googling discovery. It'll be a fun exercise. One of the reasons this device caught my attention was that many people reviewing it on the internet complained that as delivered, it is not Google certified. So Google Play doesn't work by default. Now mind you, Google Play is installed, but disabled. You have to go through this long process to actually enable Google Play. But you all know me, folks. The fact that Google doesn't run on it was music to my ears. And I wondered if I could treat it like a de-Googled phone and see what the limitations are. So we'll go through the process of discovery here and you'll see what the story is. Now, this device is targeted to e-readers, meaning it is intended to compete against the Amazon Kindle reader. It looks similar in size to the Kindle Oasis, and the Kindle Oasis is a little bit cheaper than this Nova 2. This Nova 2 has a slightly larger screen than the large Kindle, but the form factor looks smaller. But that's where you have to stop with the comparison because this is beyond being just a reader. This device is actually an Android tablet. It's just an Android tablet with an e-ink and not Google certified. So e-ink aside, I'm going to spend my time examining it as an Android tablet to see what it can or cannot do. 
and you can see other reviews on YouTube by other creators that will focus on the e-reader side because I won't do that. So as I said, when you first start this device, it doesn't seem to be able to do much because it will not have a Google Play Store. It does have a small app store in it with several reader apps and most importantly, a Kindle app that's there and you can get that up and running quickly. The absence of an app store will not seriously affect you if your intent is to use it as an e-reader. You can upload PDF documents, eBooks, EPUB, and just about any format. There's a reader for any format. But this is actually a full Android, so many will want to experiment and have a Google Play Store. But you know me, guys. I don't want to have a Google Track device, which is exactly what will happen if you enable Google services and the Google Play Store. You can enable Gaps, Google Apps, but it's a little convoluted because you apparently have to wait for hours for some sort of approval by Google. But in my case, I want the reverse. I wish I had access to the ROM of this Android because I'd like to tweak it. I wish they had a version without gaps pre-installed at all. But it's here, so I have to deal with it. So first thing I did was to confirm that Google Play Services and Google Play Store was disabled. It is. But just for extra insurance, I went to settings and turned off all those permissions for those Google services. Okay? right here. Done. Now, if you watch any of my videos on the Googling, you will know that the spying code happens with Wi-Fi scanning for one, and then Firebase telemetry, and then device fingerprinting with your IMEI, MZ, Google ID, and so on. Well, as I will prove to you later, this device has no sensors. There is no GPS, no inertial measurement unit, IMU, no speakers. It does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but without these particular sensors, it cannot report anything useful, even if the Google services were activated. Very cool. But I had to prove that, so I tested it later on, since the specs don't mention sensors at all. So here's the next question. Can I load F-Droid and perhaps the Aurora store on this? How about Micro G? In order to do that, it was actually super simple. When you plug the USB cable into your computer, the Nova 2 appears as a drive and then you can actually have direct access to the storage directory, which must be the SD card in the device. So all I had to do was get a copy of the F-Droid APK, which I already have, and then I copied it over to the Downloads folder, and then from there I can install it. One of the more important things to do before you use this device is to make sure that your Wi-Fi is connected. I was wondering why certain things didn't work, and as it turns out for power saving, this device will put the Wi-Fi in sleep mode. So if weird things are happening, likely your Wi-Fi is off, so just turn it on. Okay, now I'll install F-Droid by going to the download folder, and then I'll refresh the repositories. So in theory, I can install apps I need from F-Droid. But what I want to check is to see if I can install the Aurora Store, which is the Google Play Store spoofer. It will allow me to download from Google Play without an identity. And this is something I explained in my degoogling videos. Initially, Aurora Store didn't work when I logged in. Now, like I said, I was trying to figure this out and it turns out that the reason was the Wi-Fi. So when I fixed that, everything worked. F Droid Store works. Aurora Store works. Now from the F-Droid store, I was able to install and get K9 email and got that running. So that's running normally and text-based apps like that work very well on this. From the Aurora store, I was able to install Kindle, the official one from the Google Play Store, and I was also able to install Spotify. Now this device has no speakers or headphone jack, but it has Bluetooth. So you'll need a Bluetooth device to listen to music. 
I happen to have installed a Bluetooth amp system on my boat, so that's perfect. Let me give you a short tour of this device. This is the main interface. If you swipe the top edge, you get your normal Android panel to configure the device. The main thing you will see is that there's backlighting and this can be controlled as daylight or night light by adjusting each separate slider over here. Pretty cool and easy on the eyes and will allow you to sleep better when reading at night. There's a rotate button. Now this is a little different. To rotate you just pick the T that you want to set the orientation to in any of the four positions. This could be useful for left and right handed people so I can rotate it this way. or I can rotate it that way. Now to compensate for the refresh rate of the e-ink, it comes with different speed modes. You will see normal mode to behave more like a reader with a slow refresh and all the way to speed mode which operates more like an Android. The faster you go, the more you have to tolerate the ghosting that happens on the screen. The fastest mode, called X mode, is more experimental. It's not really something you'd pick for normal use. But, depending on how you want to use it, you can use the speed mode for website scrolling so it's faster. This e-ink, by the way, has one big advantage, and that is power saving. In theory, without backlighting, you don't need to power this for a week or two, so perfect for travel. So here on the left tab is where you'd put books on your library. And here in this example, I'm going to download a book and put it in my library. There's a built-in Onyx bookstore which shows up as store. Now here's one of the best features of this device, and that is the note. Let me just demonstrate this. Add a notepad, and here you can take handwritten notes. This is perfect for a college student, or even for business use. Very nice write width with the pen. It feels very natural and precise. I've always felt that handwritten notes are faster for quick ideas than typing it somewhere. And it's always handy, always there, if this device is by your side when you work, you won't need paper. Very cool. Certainly something you don't do on a Kindle. It can accept text and here's the fun part. It can actually do handwriting recognition if you want to make your scribbles more readable later. Very practical. Here's the storage button which gives you access to the file system and it actually gives you full access to the data or user data partition on your device including the app section. may have to play with this some more later. We'll go back to apps later on but first let's visit the settings section and here you'll find some of the settings commonly found in Android. This is heavily customized from a standard Android since a black and white interface has to be approached differently. There's not a lot of settings to figure out. Here in apps, there's a USB debugging mode which is used for ADB, but I have not gotten that to work. 
I turn off the bookstore and also keep the Google Play turned off since we loaded an alternate Play Store, F-Droid and Aurora Store. Okay, back to apps. Just to prove that there are no sensors, I loaded several apps to see. I loaded a GPS GNS testing app to see the location settings. And you can see that it fails. I loaded a compass app and gave it location permissions. First, it doesn't find a magnetometer and it doesn't find a location from the GPS. I loaded a balance level from Aurora Store. And this also fails as well because there is no internal measurement unit sensor with no magnetometer, no gyroscope, and no accelerometer. So all this shows that this is basically sensor free. Because of this, most of the location apps fail even if I granted location permissions. It does have some sort of basic camera in the back, very low resolution, and there is a microphone so you can record. I loaded Forecasty, the weather app from F-Droid, and though it works, I couldn't initially set the city. When I looked at the app again on my Motorola G7 Play, I noticed that the buttons were invisible but are there. So I tapped around and found out how to configure it. This is where I discovered that many apps are not configured for e-ink, so some of their color choices may be off and you may not be able to see the normal interface controls. This appears to be a common problem for many apps that have no experience with e-ink. You can't read their text because of the color choices. I tried installing my own app Braxme and I couldn't see the button to start it. So my app has a sizing problem for this tablet and I'll have to work on that. However, the app worked great from the browser as you can see here. And most websites function very well. Spotify operates normally in the black and white mode. Again, it needs Bluetooth since there are no audio components built in. Things that seem to fail are Orbot. I tried running Orbot and for some reason it won't start. But apparently you can add a VPN client in here. I haven't tried that to see how difficult it is. Now this is using Aurora Store as I configured so there's no way to install paid apps. This is only for free apps. I suppose if you installed Google Play Store on this, at least the information Google gets would be limited. However, I'm worried about them seeing my Google ID on another device. Apps that require location and sensors will not work. MicroG is the Google services spoofer for notifications and location, and it does not work either. Though it is possible to watch a video on this, it is basically just garbled images. So use your phone for video. This is not a device for that because of the ghosting problem on e-ink. Again, whether or not an e-ink Android device can be useful to you, the more interesting exercise is how to use this without Google and to see how far I got. At least for my purposes, it made a very good impression on me, particularly for doing some Android things in bright sunlight like reading, taking notes, doing email, browsing, and even listening to music. I just get an eye strain trying to do stuff with a phone in bright light. So this is a cool addition. And during COVID days, you can actually work from your backyard. Anyway, a fun experiment to see if we can de-Google anything in general. This can be because this device doesn't have sensors. So the Google services responsible for the device spying will not work. Good to know, and this could be true of all tablets without a GPS. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this channel and hit that notification bell. I have several videos on de-googling that you'll want to watch as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.